Today I've got five patriotic DIYs for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. We're going to start off with project number one, which is a firework sign. So these are some thrifted pieces that I have. And I'm just going to put these together very easily. Now if you don't have thrifted pieces, that's fine. You can definitely use some things like um, from Dollar Tree. Or maybe some things you had last year that you just want to make over. So you just need a little sign like this. You'll need something to stand it up with. And then something to, like little fireworks or something to pop off the top. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape on the back of my sign so that I can fill in the holes where I removed my cord or my rope or my jute, whatever you want to call it, because it may be different for you. I'm just going to fill in with a little bit of this um, spackling, lightweight spackling, right in there and then just rub off the excess. Now it's barely noticeable going to let it dry then you're going to need something on the back so that it will stand up I have these I got a package of these from Goodwill but you can use the building blocks from Dollar Tree you know the kids little stacking blocks tower blocks or whatever you have to put on the back just so that it will stand up you can use something like this see about the same width I'm going to take these two picks apart and then I'm going to cut them down to a length that works best. I'm just looking to see where I want them. And that's about the right height for me. I like that. These little stars kind of spin around freely. They're really cute. All right, now that they're the same size, I'm just going to make sure that my little wires are straight. Just like a firework would shoot straight up in the sky. That's kind of the, the look I'm going for here. Now I'm going to just push these down in the little slot that's in the back of this, but you don't have to because I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have something like I have. Which by the way, I think it's like a place card holder or maybe a picture holder, not sure. But you can just use um, hot glue to hold these down. If you don't have hot glue or don't want to use hot glue or want to use something besides just hot glue, you can use some tape on the back to hold them right next to the sign. So I'm just going to take some masking tape or painter's tape, whatever you have. You can even use duct tape here. I'll just tape that down. For you, uh, those of you who like the backs finished, you can go ahead and paint it or cover it with some kind of fabric if you would like. But mine is not going to be sitting in the center of a bar. Nobody is going to see the back of mine. This is project number one. Project number two is going to be a patriotic home sign. Hopefully you have seen these at your Dollar Tree. They have, I think one says love and one says home. Use a lid off of a candle, very simple. Mine came from the thrift store, I have a scrap of fabric and then I have some half beads. These are the smaller, I do have some that are a little bit larger. So I'm gonna start by removing the label. I do this on um, lots of projects. And I just use my little heat gun here. I used to peel them and use a little putty knife and all that to scrape it off, but this makes it so much easier. Once that's removed, I'm gonna take the wreath off of my home sign. Careful, because you don't wanna break it. You want it to be whole, we're gonna use it again. And then I want this little surface area to be flat and it's got a lot of hot glue and leaves that didn't come off on there, so I'm just gonna clean it. And then using some hot glue, <laughs> I'm gonna put the Biggest part of that lid down. So the very top of the lid goes down. It does have a lip on it. I'm gonna take this little wreath and just unwind it. It's just one long strand. Hopefully yours will be this way too. And I'm just gonna straighten it out. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the pitberry and wrap that around there. That came from the Dollar Tree as well. If you don't have um, if you're trying to make these little wreaths yourself, you can use one of those Christmas, I don't know, it's like a greenery tie that you get at Christmas time. If you have any of those, those make great small wreaths too. They'll work. All right, now I'm going to test this against the lid because I want it to fit right on that lip. See the lip there? It's kind of a graduated um, situation. 
and I'm going to just measure it and then I'm going to hold it in place, pick it up, and then wrap it around. So now I have exactly the right size of wreath to go over that little wood piece. Very easy. Now doesn't that look much better? And we're giving it more dimension and making it look more expensive by bulking it up a bit and giving this sign a little more dimension. Nothing hard to do, nothing difficult. Remember what I say, there's no wrong in crafting. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of these little beads and go on the inside. I didn't exactly know where I was going on this. Uh, I thought that I would just put the beads on the inside and we'd have that beautiful little piece of wood in there. And that would be perfect for all year round. Um, you could leave it up in your house all the time. If you're into budget-friendly DIYs and you like to craft but you don't want to spend a lot of money, consider subscribing to the channel because I'm always doing my very best to bring you thrifted, Dollar Tree, discount, recycled, flips, what have you, so that you can make beautiful things without spending a lot of money. So you could leave it like this, right? You could definitely leave it just like this if you wanted to. But I'm going to add a little something to it to give it a little more of a festive zing. I'm going to show you two ways you can do this. First off, if you like that and you just want to leave it like that, you can add one little red ribbon to the top or a little bow just to give it a touch. And I'll show you how to do that. Really simple little shoelace bow. Take several strands, however many you like. I believe I have three or four here and then you're just going to tie it into a bow and you can trim off your tails as short or as long as you like them. I just like to keep mine kind of in proportion to the size of the wreath that I'm using. See I'm just trimming it and then you can just glue that to the top or the center if you would like. But for me it was coming off a little Christmassy. So I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree ribbon which is absolutely stunning. I found this recently and I'm so happy. I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm just going to cut off a, cut out a circle. You know how to do this. You're just going to cut like a semicircle, and that will give you the correct proportions on the sides. And then you can just trim it down until you get it the right size or you can measure it first off, which I did not do. It's going to fit perfectly in those beads. I'm just going to take a little hot glue here and I'm going to put that ribbon right in the middle. And then you can take your fingernail and just press down underneath the edge of the beads if you didn't use too much glue um, and then it'll fit down in there perfectly and what a difference that makes right so just to carry out that little half bead look I decided I would go ahead and put some of those beads right in the corners just like that now again this is one of those situations you could go all the way around the outside if you wanted you could use regular beads you could use ribbon you could leave it alone and not put anything else on it if you wanted to you could even use tinsel if you wanted really make it festive and sparkly we still have our original hanger here but then i thought you know what i'm going to color these they look like the letters look like they could be colored in so i'm going to take just my paint pens and you can find those in my amazon store um, i do have a link down below I'm an affiliate, so just so you know, I do receive a small amount of earnings at, at no um, cost change to you. And I'm just going to fill in right in the thickest parts of these letters. And I think this really stepped it up to say, Happy Memorial Day, Happy Fourth of July, what every holiday that you want to celebrate that is patriotic I think that this was a beautiful way to do it now I'm gonna skip that little corner on the M the little bottom over there but don't worry I'm gonna catch it in just a second no worries I'll get it and I really like this this would have been pretty in red too if you prefer red over blue or you could even use white there we go I got it and this is our home sign Project number three is going to be a star mason jar. This one is a Dollar Tree project. Get you some ribbons from the Dollar Tree, some jute, some colored jute, um, another scrap of that fabric, and then just a little mason jar decoration. And this was from Christmas. 
I'm gonna cut off this jute and you can leave your you can either cover up that decorative piece or you can leave it and then that way you have a reversible sign I'm gonna remove this off the back I don't want this to show through I don't want the dimension of it to show through on my fabric so I'm just gonna add some Mod Podge. Now with Mod Podge, you wanna go very thin if you're using paper. So if you decide to use paper instead of fabric, go very thin so you don't get lumps and bumps. But when you're using fabric, you can definitely use more. So I'm gonna put down a thick coat of it, like I'm putting mayonnaise on toast. And then I'm gonna put, press it down, and then I'm gonna add more Mod Podge on the top. I'm using a matte Mod Podge. If you want this to be, if you really want those white stars on the fabric to pop, you need to use white paint underneath first and let it dry really well and then do this process. When you do it this way, it's going to look a little more, what, what is the, what is the, um, the name of the style? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I want to say Americana, but it's not Americana, it's something else. But it's going to be a little more rustic because you can see here when it dries, the stars look a little more cream colored. They're a little bit darker and the fabric is a little bit darker. So I'm just going to trim it off here and then I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to go around the edges and this is going to give it a nice clean finish. Now because we put that Mod Podge all the way over the corners, that fabric is nice and stiff like a piece of paper and it will come off easily, crisply and cleanly. But don't worry, if there's a little bit of, of um, you know, where it's coming kind of rough looking, just go ahead and add a little more Mod Podge and allow it to dry. So then I'm going to take a piece of jute, just cut a long section off here. I'm going to go back over the middle. You can take your jute all the way up if you want, or you can make it as thick or thin as you would like. Wrapping it back around, this is the same style that it had with the Christmas sign but it's gonna cover up your edge. Flip it over in the back, glue it down on itself, and trim off the excess. Protect your fingers. I'm using my cool temperature here. Okay, so now for a bow. You can do any type of bow you like. You can do the little shoelace bow like you saw on the other project that I showed you how to do. But I wanted to make a little messy bow for this. I think it just would look really great with the coloring and the style of that fabric. So I'm gonna do three inch strips. I wanna put some browns in there and some reds. I'm trying to choose a red that's a little deeper so that it matches better with the fabric, which now looks a little more burgundy colored or maroon. You can even use jute in there. Here's some wired ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna add that in there too. And then you're just going to make X's and crisscross it on itself. You do not have to use a particular pattern. You can stack this however you like. This is just the way I do it. Again, there's no wrong. And just stack that all in there. Any color you like, any style you like. Dollar Tree has a huge variety in their Crafter Square now. I could not believe it. And the lady at my store told me earlier this week that she's got boxes and boxes in the back of new crafting stuff. So I'm excited to go back and see what they have now because they have really, really come a long way uh, in their ribbon game. So now I'm just gonna use jute around the middle, tie that super tight in a couple of knots so that it stays down. And then I'm going to be trimming off that jute so that the jute itself becomes part of the bow. So there you go. I didn't cut it off short. It's the size of the rest of it. And look how cute this is. Look at this bow. I love this. Beautifully rustic. And I can just add it down in the center, in the top where the jute is, or to either side. Whichever way you like best, do it that way. And see, I'm fiddling with everything. I want to make sure that everything is spread out nicely. And that's where we're going to put it. Then you can do your final trimming of the bow if you want to cut down some things. If you want to, if you have a particular ribbon that needs dovetailing or whatever, you can certainly do that at that point too. And really this, as it is right now, would be perfect. Perfectly fine. But I want to do a little something extra. So I thought, let's go ahead and use those beads and let's make the number four, like for the 4th of July. 
So I'm just drawing it down with my pencil. And then I'm gonna be covering it up. This is just gonna be the guide. And I know, can you see it? Yeah, you can see that. And then I'm just gonna lay these out to make sure it's what I like because it's pencil that we used. I can always erase that off of there if I don't like the way that it looks. I always like to do kind of a dry run to see how it's gonna look before I do it. So see, I'm adding a little bit. This is just, you know, the basic form of the number four that I'm using. You could use little stickers or little star stickers or any type of a bead or sequin, you know, depending on what your style is here to make this your own. We always want to make it our own. Just because this is my style doesn't mean it's yours and that's okay. You watch the videos, you take the inspiration, and then you make it your own. See how easy this is to do? Just continuing around and I want to butt those little beads right up next to one another so that I don't leave any weird gaps. Starting from the inside and working out very simply like this. And look at that little four. I love that, that's so precious. Would you have put the four on there or left it off? I love this. Now it's particularly the 4th of July. Okay, project number four is going to be a gnome home sign using a yard stake from Dollar Tree and a sign from Dollar Tree and then a piece of that wallpaper section from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by taking this house apart. We're gonna carefully remove the little roof pieces here because we're gonna use them again. Take uh, as much of that stuff off the back as you can so that it will lay flat. Be careful, there are little, could be little staples or nails in here. My paper is peeling off nicely, which I love it when it does that. But you see the little nails that are remaining in there? Be careful and cut those off flat. You do not wanna poke yourself. You don't, you know, when you start rubbing this paper down, you don't want to get poked in the finger. I cut my finger doing some crafts um, today that I was working on, and that's never pleasant. But it happens. It's part of it, right? No crying. No crying and crafting. Okay, so I'm just tracing out how much we're going to need for the house, trimming off all that little excess. And then I am going to peel apart the paper, and then just try not to tear anything, obviously. Try to kind of make sure that I have it centered back where it is, where it needs to be on the little house frame back there, or board, and then press it down. You see, if you're doing that and those nails are in there or staples are in there, you're gonna hurt yourself. Now I'm just gonna take my little squeegee, my Mod Podge squeegee, and I'm just gonna go over here and make sure that this is pressed down nicely to the board underneath. You could always flip over and use the back if you wanted to, whichever way you want to. But there's something about having the fireplace to the one side of the house. I always like it on that side, so I decided to do it this way. It was easy enough to remove. Didn't take much time. Now I'm going to paint. I'm just going to use some wood tint. You can use gray paint, whatever you have, depending on, you know, I'm trying to match it up to the little wood pieces that, well, they're not wood, but you know what I mean that go on the roof line and this was a really good match so and it dries very fast a lot quicker than paint does so see that's close enough right now we're going to start thinking of placing these pieces back down they were not even when i bought it uh, they were hanging down and there was see here how there's the points higher if you put them down where it's supposed to be this happens a lot with dollar tree stuff it's not really symmetrical or exactly how it should be but it's easily fixed i just trimmed off a little bit to make sure that it sits nicely flatly and neatly just like that and then move on to the other piece and put it back down where it belongs to that's a lot neater a lot neater all right now for some reason, this gnome has one foot bigger than the other. Again, Dollar Tree. Not always symmetrical, not always perfect. Just bend it into place or cut it off if you need to, if it bothers you. It bothered me, so I bent it. <laughs> I'm gonna use some of these little poppets 
and I'm just going to use these to give a little dimension and to help give this something to stick to the sign. It sticks nicely, the adhesive on the back of these, to the uh, metal and then the glue will actually hold the little stickers, the little poppets to the sign. So to stay on there nicely. But you can also use something like um, E6000. You could use the Fix All Adhesive from Dollar Tree. That works really well too. But still, this is dimensional and you're gonna, you might have a hard time getting it to lay flat because there are raised areas there. So I'm just gonna put him down there where I like him. And you know, he's not standing flatly on the ground, but that's okay. It's a gnome. Maybe he's got his foot angled in a different direction. Who knows what he's doing? Who knows how long he's been standing there in front of his house, right? Maybe he's tired. Maybe he had a long day in the garden. All right, now we're going to make a little banner for his house. I'm gonna make a two and a half inch square or two inch square, whatever I measured. You want an exact measurement of your square. And then you're gonna fold it in half. You can crease this type. It does not have any wire in it, so this type of ribbon will crease for you. And you're gonna cut right down the crease line. You can do this a few times depending on how long you want your little banner to be. And then I'm gonna just cut these down, right down the middle. These are making little symmetrical triangles. You see that? So if you cut right down the middle, this is what it looks like. If you cut it again down the center, then you have even smaller pieces. And this is how you get little triangles that are the same size. So I'm gonna take a piece of this red jute and decide where I want his banner to be on his house. And I like it at an angle like this. So that's what I'm gonna do. But you can put your banner on there any way you like. I'm gonna add some hot glue on the back and a little piece of paper to hold it down. And then we're gonna flip it back over and start adding down the little pennants to our banner. We're just going to add a tiny bit of hot glue. And that was me trying to be very careful with the hot glue. I don't. This is not a fine tip glue gun, but it works well if you take your time. Protect your fingers because you will probably be coming in contact with some glue. And then just continue along the length of your piece of jute. Now, if you want your little pennants to be smaller, go ahead and cut them in half again, and then you can have more pieces on there instead of just the four that I have. I'm only using half the glue on this one because I know that I'm gonna trim off a section of it down here, and I'm just gonna angle it sort of with the roof line and just cut that extra piece off. And now it's laying down there nicely. And look at his little, his little festive banner. So cute. He's working on this house today. All right, now we're gonna add some greenery because he's a gnome, and don't gnomes love gardens and being outside? Of course, so would we expect anything less of our little gnome than to have some beautiful shrubbery in his yard? Right next to his house, we're gonna put some of these little ferny looking picks. And this actually may be, it may be Christmas greenery. I'm not sure because I got it from the thrift store. So use whatever type of greenery you like. I don't re recommend using the eucalyptus picks that have the, um, you know, they're kind of a uh, spirally looking because you're not going to be able to get your pick to lay down on there to stick to the surface because it's too dimensional. There's too much bulk. But you can use ferns here. That would be really cool too. Or you can use leaves, whatever you like. Even flowers, if you wanted to do a little flower garden there. Maybe he has a flower bed in front of his house instead. I wanted to add a little piece on the top, of course, just to carry it up. I don't like things to look too heavy in one section. We're spreading the love here, spreading the greenery. Glue it where you need to. Isn't that cute? I love that. And I'm just finishing it off to make sure nothing comes apart. And this is our little sign, isn't it cute? Project number five is gonna be the USA Woodblocks. This may be my favorite project of all of these. I'm using scraps of wood that my husband gave me from, I think a project maybe working on the porch. It may be when we made the little, we have a little section beside our house where we keep our rakes and our gardening stuff. I think it might be from the post or something there. The framing, I think. 
I'm going to use some white chalk paint, and this is actually plaster, so it's a little off-white. And I'm going to cover each one of these blocks all the way, except I left the back off just because I'm trying to save my paint. And then they're different sizes and that's no problem. I like it like that. This ribbon folds, as I showed you in the other project, it will crease when you fold it, which makes it perfect for this project. So I'm just kind of looking to see how much I want to use here so that it appears that it's sort of framed or in the center. And I'm going to fold each one of these and then put it down in the center of each block. Very easy. If you don't have ribbon that you like, you can certainly use pieces of uh, scrapbooking paper or craft paper. Um, you could paint this. You could do whatever you like. I'm going to use Mod Podge again. I'm going to put that down here. And this is how we're going to stick the ribbon to it. Now I'm not going to use as much this time because I don't want to change the color of my ribbon. And it does tend to darken up a bit when you use Mod Podge. But I will go back and do the edges just to make sure that it stays down. And then one more time here on the end for the last block. And put that down. And then I'll go back over and kind of go around mainly my edges just because I want to make sure that they're sealed down. I don't want anything to peel off. Y'all, this was an easy project. It really was. Now, I'm just using some of these little, I guess they're chipboard or something like that, letters. I'm going to pick out USA. You can use any stickers you like. You can use the little wooden pieces that you get from Dollar Tree, the little alphabet pieces, if you would like. You can glue your blocks together uh, from side to side if you would like, but I'm going to show you an alternative way to do it if you don't want to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of lay these down to see where I want them so that each of the letters are in the same spot when they are standing, you know, kind of the same height. I love the silver on these. I've had these forever and I've used them in Christmas crafts before, but they're very appropriate for 4th of July. Okay, so you can see how that looks. Yes. All right, now to decide how we wanna put these together, I'm just gonna give you some options. I'm gonna double up some jute, a red piece and a brown piece and I'm going to just tie around here. Now these are not glued together yet, so you may see them shuffling around. Don't be bothered by that. I wanna give you your options, because at this point I was still playing around to decide exactly how I wanted to do it. You can take a bow and put it in the middle, or you can just wrap it and not put a bow at all. That would be fine. You could also move this to the bottom and do it around the bottom section, or you could just use several layers of jute on the bottom going round and round if you would like to. I am going to glue these together just using popsicle sticks. I'm going to support two pieces and then in the middle section I'm going to support the other two pieces just like that. And that'll hold it. Now I'm just pressing down to make sure that that glue is catching on all that. And give it a minute to try to sit up and dry. Now I'm just going to slide that bow because it's not glued down to the sides. You can see how it would look if you wanted to do it this way. But for me, I decided another option. I just didn't want all that extra stuff going across my blocks. So I'm going to use a few pieces of red, a few pieces of the regular jute, and I'm just going to make a little shoelace bow. Shoestring, shoelace, whatever you want to call it. Very simple little bow. And then I'm just going to pull each of those little pieces apart again so it looks festive like a firework exploding and we're going to put it right there in the corner easy enough right trim your tails where you want them so you get the length that you like without it getting in the way of your letters and it will be perfect this was very easy but i want to give it a little more support because that one block on the side is really big i feel like that would snap off pretty easy so one more popsicle stick is going to go across all of them toward the top. Go ahead at this point and paint the back if you would like. Here is the first project we've done, the easiest one. Then there's our little gnome, the home sign, the jar, and the USA sign. 
I really like these. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do videos twice a week, normally on Mondays and Thursdays. I love, love, love having you here. I love communicating in the comment section, so feel free to say hi. I've got some collaborations coming up next week that I'm very excited about. So I hope that you stay tuned. I believe in you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.